All right, here we are at the very beginning. Day one, movement number one. And what we are gonna start with is a couple of stretches. So the first stretch that I wanna show you, we are going to do for our hip flexors. And near the start of this program, most of our stretches we are going to do very slow and gently in and out, rather than a long hold of a stretch, because we're not trying to really increase our flexibility so much as we're trying to increase the pliability of the tissues in the area and trying to make sure that they can accept a little more load in the form of stretch. So we're not gonna hold these stretches for now. We are gonna do about 30 seconds, but we're gonna move in and out as we go. So the very first one that we're gonna do is for our hip flexors, which are in the front. So our hip flexors bring up here, and in order to relax them, we need to be able to extend our hip here. So what I want you to do is to have a countertop, a chair, something that you can hold onto off to one side, and then you're gonna get into what we call a scissor stance. So a scissor stance essentially just means that you're in one foot pretty far in front of the other, and one foot back. You're gonna hopefully have both of your feet aiming completely forward, but if you have to aim toes out to the side, that's fine. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna have your support hand on something, you're gonna have the scissored stance, you're gonna try to get upright, and then you're gonna shift your weight forward, but as you shift your weight forward, what I want you to do is to keep your chest up high and keep your pelvis moving forward. A lot of people are gonna shift forward by leaning. What I need you to make sure that you do is to try to stay upright and simply push your hips forward to try to open up the front. So we're gonna do 30 seconds of just back and forth, front to back, slowly in, and slowly out, just like this. So if you have to, you can lift your back heel off of the ground as we go. There's no reason that you have to turn this into a calf stretch or an ankle stretch, but all I want you to do is to try to maintain a little bit of an upright, and take your pelvis and move it forward. The further forward you go, the more you're gonna be putting a little bit of a stretch and at the front of your right hip. So once we've done about 30 seconds on that side, we're gonna switch, do the exact same thing the other way. We're gonna have a little bit of support with our hand. We're gonna spread our legs out, and we're gonna do 30 seconds of just gently and slowly rocking front to back, moving primarily through the middle of our body and our pelvis. If you need extra support as you do this, it might not hurt to have uh, a broom, a golf club, a hockey stick, something else in the other hand, just for balance purposes. But if you have a countertop beside you, that's probably one of the easiest things. So you wanna make sure that you're doing this with control where possible and slowly just for safety. Good. So when it comes to the width of your feet, you don't necessarily have to be specific with exactly how wide they are. All we want is a width that's going to be comfortable enough so that your hips don't get any kind of pain while we're doing this. And you're primarily experiencing a stretch up the inside of your thighs as we go. And we're gonna do just one side at a time. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna stay upright. We're gonna to try to be as balanced as we can. You might have to hold on to a countertop. You might have to hold on to a chair, but you're gonna to try to stay as upright as you can. And we're gonna shift our weight a little bit side to side. We're gonna achieve this primarily by moving our hips and our pelvis through the middle. If you find that shifting your whole body weight off to one side is a little much for you, I'd recommend that you keep your body in the center and you just kind of move your hips underneath you by leaning the opposite way. So you move one way with your hips and the other way with your shoulders. It should give you a good stretch on the straight leg, the direction that you're leaning your shoulders. So we're gonna do 30 seconds as we always have where we're gonna go slowly in and slowly out, making sure we're under control the whole time. Okay, 30 seconds to one side. As you go, if you experience any sensation on the outside of your hip, that's fine. It doesn't mean that we're doing anything wrong, but if you feel like it gets more uncomfortable as you go, you might want to narrow your feet up a little bit, as in bring your feet a little closer to each other. A lot of people might experience cramps on the outside of their hip as they go. That's entirely normal. We can work through those. So once we've done 30 seconds on one hip, what I'd like you to do is bring yourself back in, give your legs a little shake out just to make sure that they're recovered a little bit before we go and do the exact same thing on the other side. 
So again, we're gonna do 30 seconds where we're gonna shift our shoulders one way and our hips the other to try to put a stretch into a straightened leg. So we're now gonna do the other direction. And if your hips feel different, that's entirely okay. Again, what we're looking for is a stretch on the inside of this straightened leg and through here, try to keep yourself as upright as you can. If you experience a pinch on the outside of this hip, try to rearrange something about your feet, either aim them a little more out or maybe bring them a little bit more narrow. And there's the last rep. Once you're done, I'd recommend making sure you have some support and then one leg at a time, bring your feet back to the center again. The last stretch that we are going to do is going to be a standing stretch for the glutes. So what you're gonna need for this one is a coffee table or a chair or something that you can put a foot up onto um, that you can hopefully have a little bit of balance with as well. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna face it and you're gonna put one foot up on top with the other still on the ground. I'd recommend putting hands on top of this thigh or one hand on top of that thigh and the other hand on top of the chair or whatever object it is that you're using. So what you're gonna to try to do is again, try to keep your chest up proud and keep everything relatively still in the middle so that we're not rounding our back as we go. And all you're gonna do is just try to take your, aim your belly button down towards the floor just inside the foot that's supported. So it's gonna look something like that. If you find that that gives you a pinch in the front of your hip, what I want you to do is to take a small step to the side, put your foot back in the same place so that rather than having your leg aiming straight in front of you, it's aimed up to the side a little bit. That's entirely fine. So we're gonna do the same thing as before in that we're gonna do 30 seconds of bending forward where we're going slow on the way down, slow on the way up, no need to hold for now, just make sure that you maintain control. You can have one hand on here, both hands on here, or you can support yourself on something else. I just recommend that you're supported as you go. Okay, we've got 30 seconds. So some people, as we do this, are gonna feel it in the back of their thigh or in the back of their hamstrings. That's entirely fine. Other people are gonna feel it around the outside here of their glute. That's fine as well. What's important is that you have control on the way in and control on the way out. Good. So once we've done one side, you're gonna to wanna to stand for a few seconds, make sure that you shake the legs out and that everything feels fine for you. And then you're gonna take the other leg and do the exact same thing. Try to put, in a, put it in approximately the same position that you started with the other leg, just to make sure that we're trying to be even side to side, but it's entirely fine if they don't feel the same. The same rules apply. If you get a pinch in front of this hip, you might wanna open yourself up a little bit so your leg is a little further out to the side. If you don't get a pinch, you can just be straightforward doing the same sort of thing. So again, we're gonna do 30 seconds with some support on the thigh, some support on something else, trying to aim our belly button down towards the inside of our foot. I'd recommend if you have access to it that you use something hard that you can step on. The only reason being that if it's soft, it makes the balance a little bit harder. We got one more rep. And good. So this has been the introduction that we're gonna use a little bit almost every single day to try to make sure that our hips are warmed up and moving through the range of motion that we want. And then we're gonna move into a little bit of strengthening exercises for all the areas around our hip. Day one, exercise number one. One of the first things that we wanna work on is our hip flexors. So a common myth that you hear a lot of the time about hip flexors is that they're always tight. And the reality is they're not tight in that many people. If anything, they're actually probably weak and hence they tend to hold on because they don't have great control. So one of the things that we're gonna do is we are actually gonna start by strengthening our hip flexors. So your hip flexor again goes from deep in the front of your thigh bone all the way up to inside your pelvis and inside, right beside your spine. So a uh, hip flexor flexes your hip, so that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna give ourselves about 30 seconds of a gentle push followed by a little bit of rest. 
It's important that you don't push as hard as you can, and it's also important that you don't uh, that you don't relax too quickly. So what you want is to have it ramp up and accelerate till you hold, and then slowly decrease as well, instead of being like an on off on off. Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of muscle tone at all times, and we're never gonna fully turn it on or fully turn it off. Okay, so you're gonna start flat on your back. And you can have legs straight or you can have both legs bent. It's entirely up to you. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna take one leg and put it straight up in the air and give yourself some resistance with this hand. So for 30 seconds, you are gonna push your hand into your knee. They're not gonna move anywhere. You're just gonna push hand into knee and then you're going to relax. And we're gonna alternate between relaxing and pushing for 30 seconds, go. And what you're gonna see out of my hand is I'm gonna open my hand up very wide and tensed to show that I'm pushing. And you'll see that it goes a little more curled and relaxed to show that I'm not pushing. So you're just pushing on and off. So a lot of people, when they start doing this, they're gonna get a little bit of cramp in the front of the hip. It's entirely fine. Good. So once we've done 30 seconds on that hip, what I want you to do is to straighten your legs for a minute, roll your toes and your hips back and forth just to try to get them to relax. Bring both legs up again, and then you're gonna take the other knee and you're gonna bring it up to about 90 degrees as well. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna push with the hand, and we are gonna alternate for 30 seconds of pushing a little bit and then relaxing a little bit. You can pay attention to what my hand is doing to be able to tell just how much I'm pushing. 30 seconds, go. If you find that this is uncomfortable on your hip, try to bring your hip a little bit lower and push a little bit lower with your hand as well. So your mid thigh instead of on the knee. Just got a little bit longer. One more, and then we're done. So next, we are going to do uh, what's called a glute lift. So we are gonna be exercising the muscles on the back of our hips, our glutes, and all we're gonna be doing is you're gonna be laying flat on your stomach, in whatever position is comfortable for you, and you're going to be lifting your legs just ever so slightly off the ground with a straight knee. So we're gonna be in this position here. So most people, they can be up on their elbows and that will be comfortable for them. If that's not comfortable for you, you can get down into this position or you can have your face all the way on the ground. It's entirely up to you. Just try to make it comfortable for your neck and your shoulders and as relaxing as possible. So we're gonna do the same thing in that we're gonna spend 30 seconds per side where we're just gonna lift one leg ever so slightly up in the air and then we're gonna bring it back down again. And we're gonna do just one side at a time. Before we start, I need you to know that you don't have to lift as high as you can. If you lift too high, it's gonna transition a little bit of the force into your low back rather than into your hips. And we'd rather just you exercise your hips for our purposes. So you're only going to lift about an inch or two off the ground, make sure your thigh gets off the ground as well, and then put it right back down again. Starting with 30 seconds on one side. So notice how I'm not lifting particularly high. That's entirely fine. You might find that it's hard to hold for a split second. If that's the case, just don't even bother holding at all. Just go up and then straight back down again. And we've got just one more. Good. So after you've done one side, if you feel like your low back is getting tight in between repetitions, and you might want to lay everything down for a second, and just wiggle around. Try to let your hips loosen off a little bit. And then you're gonna come straight back up and we're gonna do 30 seconds on the other side, the same sort of thing. So if you find that this repeatedly gives you some kind of back pain, as opposed to just feeling like muscles are doing work or there's a slight discomfort, you should see a licensed healthcare practitioner about it. Everyone's gonna feel like their low back is doing work. That's fine, you might feel like it's fatiguing, that's normal. 
What we don't want is a sharp, pinching pain. If you get that, seek some help. Last one. Good. The next exercise that we're going to do was popularized by someone named Jane Fonda, you might remember. And as a result, in our industry, a lot of the time, we just call it the Jane Fonda. But for our purposes, we are gonna call it a lateral leg lift because we are taking our leg and we're lifting it straight out to the side. The reason we do this exercise is to strengthen the muscles on the outside of our hip. And these are really important muscles for us to maintain the strength in, just to be able to go on long walks and to age with, uh, to make sure that we age well when it comes to our hip health. So you'll notice that I have with me a foam roll here. We're not gonna use this on our hips. I just have this here as a pillow because we're gonna be laying on our side. So if you find laying on your side uncomfortable from letting your head hang, or you find that you don't like laying on your shoulder, I'd recommend having a pillow or just having a yoga block or something to support your head on, just to make sure that you don't have to put your head into an awkward position, just to be able to work on your hips. So for me, I'm just gonna use this to support my head and I'm gonna lay it with my arm tucked underneath me like this. So we're gonna start in the side position here. And I'm just gonna have my arm out in front of me or bent, and you're gonna have the top leg straight. If you find your bottom hip is uncomfortable, again, get a pillow, get some kind of padding. A lot of people do find that their bottom hip can be a little uncomfortable to have pressed into a hard surface. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna do 10 repetitions of taking your leg and raising it up to the side. You don't have to go very far with this exercise. All you've gotta do is bring it up as far as you're comfortable, hold for a split second, and bring it back down. The last thing I want you to know is that I want you to keep your toe aiming forward. The tendency as you lift is to aim your toe up towards the ceiling. I want you to keep your hips aiming forward. I want you to keep your toes aiming forward as well. So we're gonna do 10 repetitions with a small hold at the top and a small rest at the bottom. Just like that. There's five, that's halfway. We've got one more rep. And there's 10. So one of the things you may have felt is the outside of your hips starting to fatigue. Just so you know, it's very common for people to fatigue very quickly on this exercise. As you go through this program a few times and as you start to get stronger, it should take a little longer for you to fatigue, but don't be hard on yourself. Everyone fatigues quite a bit on these at the start. Let's switch to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna support my head. You can support it or you can let it hang down or you can put it on your arm. It's entirely up to you. Usually your bottom leg is bent and you're gonna have your top leg straight. And we're gonna do the same sort of thing. We're just gonna do 10 repetitions, keeping pelvis and toes aiming forward. I'm gonna pause slightly at the top, rest slightly at the bottom. This is rep number five, so that's halfway. Got one more, and there's the last one. So the last exercise that we are gonna do is gonna be very similar to the one that we just did with the lateral leg lifts, only we're gonna lift the other way. And what we're trying to do is to get a little bit of exercise for the muscles that are on the inside of our upper thigh. And the reason that we're trying to do this is it helps to control where our hip goes in space when we're on one leg, such as when walking. So you're gonna be in the exact same position that you were before, laying on your side, head supported, only you're gonna switch which leg is straight and which leg is bent, because you're gonna be taking the bottom leg and lifting it up towards the ceiling. I'm gonna put a caveat on this one to say, some people are gonna find that the bone on the outside of their hip will dig into a hard surface. So if you're finding that you're on a hard surface that's uncomfortable on your hip, either skip this one entirely or get a pillow or something more padded to put underneath your hip, because this will potentially put a little bit of extra pressure on the outside of your hip. If you don't feel any pressure on it and it feels fine to you, please proceed. So you're gonna be in the same position as before. 
You're going to be laying on your side. You're going to have head supported if you so choose. And before we had the top leg straight, this time what we're going to do is we're going to have the bottom leg straight. What is probably the easiest to do is to have your top foot on the ground like so, behind you or in front of you. Because what we're going to be doing is lifting this leg up towards the ceiling like that. So we're going to do the exact same thing in that we're going to spend 10 repetitions with a small hold at the top and a small rest at the bottom. You might need to rotate a little bit depending on where you want to get your support from um, because you want to make sure that you're not rolling as you do this. So we're going to do 10 repetitions starting now. And it's the same thing as before. You don't need to necessarily lift very far. If you find that you can only lift an inch, that's fine. If you find that you can lift a couple feet, that's great. It's more about getting the muscles to do the work than it is about the range of motion that you've got. That's five, that's halfway. I've got two more. Good. So what most of you should be feeling is a lot of extra work going on in the muscles on the inside of your thigh, more likely the ones that are closer up into your groin or closer up into the crotch area. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So if you have some support, put it below your head. I'm gonna demonstrate it slightly differently on this side. I'm gonna have my foot in the front rather than my foot behind, just so that you can see the differences between them. So the foot in front this time, I'm gonna roll a little bit further forward and we're gonna do 10 repetitions of lifting from here. And again, we're gonna have a slight hold at the top. That's five and halfway. Eight. We've got two more. Good. There's number 10. And that is it for day number one. So you probably learned a little bit about how your hips function and how your hips feel on day one. What I want you to do is make sure that you progress slowly and don't ever push into pain as we go through this. The goal is for you to be able to do this cycle several times through to make sure that your hips feel better as you go. Look forward to seeing you on day number two.